It's been a while since I've uploaded onto the channel, but here is an example of an OCT guided delk. The OCT microscope is very useful for such, for such cases, and you can see here I'm using the OCT to measure the depth of trephination, and here I'm doing the trephine, and I could check afterwards exactly the depth of the trephination. I'm always using Calibri just to check that it's been cut all the way around, and the OCT is a useful guide to see how deep uh, the trephination is. You can see the marks quite clearly here. Now I'm using a, a orange needle that's been bent backwards, uh, beveled down uh, with a little bit of ink to guide the cannula for the big bubble. And again, I'm using the OCT microscope to help with this to determine where the big bubble has been achieved. And you can see it very nicely here. So I'm guiding the cannula with the air just beyond the center mark. And I'm gently but firmly injecting air a steady stream and you can see the big bubble here very nicely and on the OCT you can also see the cannula and you can see that the big bubble has been achieved with the OCT guidance. Now as usual I use a crescent knife just to take off the anterior lamella cap and again the OCT is just a guide here to see uh, what's happening. Again it's a good teaching tool, tool uh, for people watching in theatre but also it helps uh, judge the depth and how much stroma you have left. Here you can see how much stroma is left despite removing the anterior cap. You can see that there's a lot of stroma still remaining, but you have a big bubble here, so it's not so important. I put a blob of viscoelastic on the top before I do the slush, and here you can see the slush into the anterior stroma to release the gas. And here you can see very nicely the viscoelastic spreading the uh, interface and you can see that the decimase is being pushed backwards. You can see the decimase membrane quite nicely here. I'm just injecting a bit more viscoelastic into the space and then after this I'm using the dark scissors to uh, create like a uh, quadrant or a bit more than a quadrant to remove each segment. I'm being very careful to cut upwards rather than downwards so these dark scissors especially in the fact that the lower half is longer than the upper half so you could chop downwards, but keep the, maintain the pressure upwards. So here I'm using the calibers very carefully to peel the quadrants back. I'm trying to do like a um, little petal uh, to spread the re remaining stroma outwards. And this is coming along very nicely. And you can see the really clear uh, decimase uh, underneath with the bubbles still within the anterior chamber. I'm carefully removing the segments with the dark scissors. You can see the shape of the scissors much nicer, much better now. And here I'm very carefully removing it up to the edge of the trephination point and not beyond. It doesn't matter if you get little uh, residual um, bits of stroma. And here you can see with the OCT, which is again very useful, the decimal membrane beaming in a white line. This is really useful to see, especially when you're judging if there's any residual stroma with a manual dissection. I'm just completing the dissection with the dark uh, scissors and now I do this very frequently which is to use a little spear very gently to make sure there's no residual viscoelastic on the interface. Very gently use BSS to, to rinse over the surface and gently remove the viscoelastic. Now I'm preparing the donor. This is a very good opportunity to help fellows um, practice with DMEC preparation. This uh, donor uh, tissue was quite young, so uh, DMEC preparation was quite challenging, but it does give the opportunity for fellows and trainees to uh, utilize the techniques for DMEC preparation. Here yeah, I do the standard DMEC preparation, but with vision blue rather than membrane blue. I'm getting the fellow to just practice using the Sinsky to lift the edges up and then try and peel back, even though we're not using specific DMEC forceps here, because time forceps often aren't controlled enough and often create little tears like they're, like they're doing here. So here the fellows um, are very carefully trying to remove the decimase and successfully removing it uh, completely and using a slightly modified technique just to peel it sideways. Now when you remove the central decimase, because you're going to do a trephination um, that may vary in size, it's worthwhile using a spear to remove the residual uh, decimates in the periphery and just give the stromal surface a little wipe uh, just to make sure there's no residual elements, you don't need trapped areas. So here I'm using just a spear um, just to remove that and now I'm doing the trephination uh, with an 8mm donor. 
So here I'm very carefully placing the donor material onto the surface of the uh, big bubbled uh, host. And now I'm carefully placing the uh, cardinal sutures. You can see that I'm getting the system to hold the opposite end uh, to maximize accuracy. You need to be very careful not to go too deep with your uh, sutures as you may perforate the decimase. A useful point here is, despite us having an OCT guidance, you can still see the bubbles in the anterior chamber, which will give you a good idea if the uh, decimase is still intact. Uh, it's important not to get any perforations at this stage, as you, if, you, if it's not recognized, you'll end up with a double AC. So again, here I'm doing the cardinal sutures very carefully. Often you may need to replace these cardinal sutures because they may not be tight enough, or may on the other hand be too tight. Uh, so I do often go back to the cardinals and check uh, what the tension is. The main thing here is to make sure you place them as accurately as possible while you don't have the marks in place. So I'm just showing examples of suturing. I'm not going to show all the suturing here uh, because I've got them all on my previous videos. But with a dalk, again, keep the, um, the edge of the needle uh, facing horizontal rather than facing downwards uh, and use the uh, flat part of the uh, needle to just push down the decimase while you're going across. Again the OCT is quite useful to look at the graft and look at the decimase and make sure there's no double AC. Here I'm doing the star marking uh, just to act as a guide. Um, I do mix between having continuous and interrupted sutures. Here's an example of interrupted sutures again because uh, this is a case where I was teaching and the fellow was doing some of the suturing as well. So again, suturing is extremely important in uh, dalks or in any graft, and it's really crucial that you make sure each suture is as equal to the other as possible. The tendency sometimes is to progressively go tighter with each suture, which means that when you come back to the first ones, they often become loose. Overtight sutures are just as bad as loose sutures. So the tension is really important. And you can see how much tension there is in the graft when you look at the OCT at the end. Now bear in mind that the cornea is often quite swollen as it's been in storage. Uh, so this the corneas will de-swell. So don't worry too much about the uh, donut that's produced at the end. Again, I'm just giving you a summary of the suturing here. Just give an idea of what's involved with a dark as opposed to a PK. And sometimes it's quite challenging when you get the white ring around the edge from the big bubble uh, to judge the depth. That's why go in first through the donor and then reassess and then use the Calibri's as a guide point to go underneath with the uh, needle. So once you've put your 16 sutures in, then occasionally you may need to uh, check the edges, uh, the interface. Uh, so you just want to go around the edge between the host and graft. And I do sometimes use a spear just to dip and check if there's any physical elastic that's been squeezed out. And again, I've shown you the OCT, which is very useful uh, to check that there's no double AC or trapped uh, areas. Here I'm now burying all the sutures. I usually bury the knot on the donor, um, and I'm very careful in not going all the way around through the interface and back out again. So you want to bury it on the side that you are leaving it. I'm now filling the AC, checking the pressure, putting the subconjures in, and we're done.